Welcome to this quick tutorial, source of evaluation, but what about the internet and websites? Building on the two previous tutorials in this series, today we will cover evaluating the internet. Because the internet is not always bad, in fact, many times it's even the best place to find information. We will also cover or recover reliability and usefulness. Think back to our first video and how we determined if a source was any good. Go ahead, I'll wait. First, we thought about the assignment requirements, then the usefulness of the information and its reliability. So, how do each of these feed into evaluating the internet? Consider the assignment requirements. What type of sources has your instructor asked you to use? Are you limited to peer-reviewed and scholarly books and articles? Or are you able to use a variety of information? What about the assignment itself? Are you looking for teacher licensure requirements or labor statistics for the Northeast United States? Sometimes websites are the best place to head for resources to answer these questions. But what about the usefulness of the information you find online? For example, you located a short article about labor statistics. It was published online in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. It talks about the state's high unemployment rates. Your topic is about labor statistics for the Northeast. Would this article be useful? Probably not. But what about the Bureau of Labor Statistics website? Probably a great resource. What about reliability? Let's consider that assignment about labor statistics in the Northeast. What if your instructor also asked you to find articles talking about what labor statistics mean for particular states or cities? You can use sources from the open web or library databases, but you need to make sure the articles are timely. You also need to consider the accuracy of the information provided in the article. Does it match what you found at the Bureau of Labor? What about the author of the article? Are they trustworthy? What are their credentials? What about the language of the article? Is it biased or does it sound like propaganda? This is also leads to the question of purpose. Why was the information created? Is it for informational purposes or was it written to bolster support for a particular opinion? Keeping these questions in mind when selecting sources, especially from freely available internet sites, provides a helpful guide for weeding out unhelpful and unreliable sources. Remember, when you are evaluating sources, first you want to consider the assignment requirements. Once you've done this, judging the usefulness and reliability of the information you find should be at the top of your list, especially when finding information freely available online. Thanks for watching this short tutorial about evaluating the internet and websites.